Good morning, everyone. This is Dory with Spotlighting the Masters with Dory. And today, my special guest is Mr. Matt Barr. How are you today, Matt? I'm good. How are you? Good. So um, why don't we start with you telling me what you're going to work on today while we're chatting. What is that you've got on your uh, board there? Well, I don't really know what I'm going to be drawing today. I mean... Oh. Okay. Uh, I got a blank piece of paper. This is what I was, uh, I was messing with uh, earlier. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's uh, it's this funny it's... new character that I've been messing with called Fullbeard. He kind of looks like a little troll a little bit, kind of, maybe. Um, but I can well, definitely see a beard. <laughs> I can definitely see a beard. Yeah, I've really been messing with this guy. He, it's going to be kind of like a... Kind of he's, a, kind of, he's gonna oh, be like okay. a, a giant brute kind nice. of. I'm full bird. <laughs> so I know you these have are, these the, are some of his bad guys. Twenty four. Oh, that's eyes. cool. I love those. I love the little. Um, are those like bubbles above them or like? Well, those are. I was. I eyeballs? totally messed up. The, yeah, these are supposed to be eyeballs. Okay. No, I get it. Because he's super smart and he like sees things at like all the angles. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I know you have that's pops. Our pops. Yeah. Pops. Oh my yeah, god, that's like, bad. They've like taken his uh, his skull and placed it inside this like battle mech, but he's like an like, <laughs> arms dealer or something. So he he that's didn't so like the cool. uh, the wheelchair. I was right. trying to do like a motorcycle wheelchair bottom, but he was like, no, nah, I don't like that. Like, oh, right. here we go. We got some comments. Good morning, Crimson Owl. Good morning. He this says, is a that's sweet death metal and hero. Oh, that metal. is. Oh, that's Luke. Yeah. That's so rad. I've like I I I can't remember where. Like I don't think he had his mohawk. I don't think he's had his mohawk when I've seen him on live. But um, I have seen a picture. I think maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um before before we go. So I don't know if you, you heard me, but um, Ronnie, also known as Crimson Al Comics, is in the chat. And he says, hey, uh, good, morning. good morning. And um, so you have, obviously, you have your camera on your art, which is which is awesome, which is amazing. Yes. This is not a complaint. But can you see the screen for the for the for today's show? I can. I can look at okay. it. OK, good. I just wanted to ask in case, you know. Because I, not that you have to be able to see the screen, but I'm going to throw up some questions that are part of a portion of my show called Spit Lighting. And we're, it's like a version of spitballing. And it's kind of a, just a little cute way for me to get to know Matt Barr. Just okay. a little better. Just a little better. So my first question is Coke or Pepsi? Uh, Pepsi. <laughs> I almost would be like neither. Like I, I don't really don't. I'm not a. I'm not a big fan of. Uh, oh, okay. Of hey, sodas. You know, that's actually a common answer. Believe it or not. Um. It there's a lot of guys or, or and women who have switched to tea or they've switched to some other kind of beverage, and so they you know saying neither is definitely. Do you have a go-to drink of beverage something similar to what people would? Um. It's either it's either water or coffee or a nice mm. IPA. <laughs> coffee. Coffee. Um, coffee, water or beer. That's usually that's that's really the, the three main. Okay. I like a good so, IPA, you know, I like a good hoppy beer. So you have him with this is there um the marker that you use for him is that a is that a marker you made that where he's like kind of that red color? Uh, this red color right here is uh, uh -huh. is just a pencil. It's a red. Oh, okay. It's kind of like you know, I think it's like uh, it's the pencil that like teachers use to grade your paper. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, I that's have... wrong. That's wrong. That's right. I have these blue pencils that Good job, Johnny. Did I miss something? Oh, no. I was just saying, you know, like a teacher, you know, they're like. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now I understand. I was, so I, 
that's why I was curious was because um, and then I'm I'm assuming you're there's a mark the it was a black marker you were using when you were doing the inking. Um, it's actually a neutral gray eighty. Okay. And I'm only using this uh, because I can't find any black markers at the moment. So this oh, I know how that feels. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just kind of like jamming. Like if it, if, you know, I might pick up a, a purple marker and start sketching with that. I'm just kind of, you know. Hey. Expressing and getting it out. You know, this isn't, you know, absolutely well, for, for anybody. Masking you something. guys, so many of you do things differently than me, which is why I was curious. I know, like, that that was not a part of my spit lighting questions, but I couldn't help but ask while I was watching. Because I, I felt bad because you stopped drawing. And I'm like, I, I hope he can continue to work while he's talking to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just okay. wasn't sure if there was, like, more stuff, something on the screen. And like oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you'll know when because I'll ask you. Um, All right. That's so cool. Like, I'm... I'm getting distracted watching what you're doing and like, oh yeah, there's another question here. Okay. So the next question is what was your favorite toy as a child? And tell me why. Oh, favorite toy. If I, if I go deep down and go, man, I wish I had that toy again. If there was one toy that right. I was like, oh shit, I wish I had that again was a uh, Chris star. The Crystal Warrior. I wish I had that figure. Okay. With his shield and his helmet and his sword. I wish I had the Crystal figure. But um, I really enjoyed G.I. Joe's. Right. Kid. And I really enjoyed Star Wars uh, vehicles. So I would put the G.I. Joe's inside the Star Wars vehicles. Yeah. So in, I... Instead of Luke Skywalker, oh. you know, flying an X-Wing, <laughs> I, had, I had Snake Eyes. Because the um, the GI Joes had better articulation than the uh, the GI Joe, I mean than the Star Wars figures. I uh, bet you, um, I was um, I was nothing like my sisters, and I wanted nothing to do with their dolls. Um, I I spent most of my time going like playing with my little my little brother's GI Joe dolls. I wanted everything to do with those dolls. Um, so my next my other question is. If you could pick one spirit animal or creature, what would it be and why? Wow. How, how cliche is it to be like a wolf? A <laughs> wolf. No, I don't think I would be. I, I think I would, I would be, um, no, I think, um, there's nothing I think wrong I'd with be, No, no, I know. No, I know. But you know, I don't think I, I don't think I would be. I see myself more as like a, um, as like a river otter or something. <laughs> You're um, like, you know, I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna go unique. I'm gonna go river otter. Um, you know what I mean? I, like, well, I think about like those like Amazon river otters, and they're like six feet long. Like they're ooh, not wow, they're no jokes. So it's huge. like they're like complete. Yeah, it's like they're aquatic cougars. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're super it's badasses, like but they're they're like super playful. Uh, they're super family orientated. Wow. Like they stick with their pods. You know, they work together. They they'll fuck up an alligator if they need to. <laughs> you know, so that's but you know that's what I like. I like the um, the aspect of being playful and and fun, I and like loyal, that. and then at, on the same nice. side, like I you know. Bite somebody that is very, and crack a crack a clam. <laughs> that is a very unique answer, Matt. So uh, we have a couple more people watching. Donald Kinzel says Tonka truck truck. Is, um, yeah, those were cool. My brother had one of these um, these trucks that were just the right size, where you could put your hands on each side of the truck and you could push it in front of you as you ran or whatever. Um, and then Crimson Owl said, "Yep, yep." And I'm not I used sure. To like read, I used to like recreate movies. Like I would Ooh. take the Millennium Falcon. Really? Yeah, I would take the Millennium okay. Falcon, and then I would pack it full of GI Joe figures, and I would fly <laughs> them somewhere, and I would have them fight like a Masters of the Universe, like Machulak or something. And I was like reenacting aliens. So I would like reenact. I would like reenact movies that I had seen or, or stuff that I really liked, like. 
you know, Clash of the Titans, I would like re reenact it with G.I. Joe figures. You're sending them on missions. They're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, they, they've got a job to do. You know, yeah, I would like take plots. I would take plots and shit that I'd seen in they're movies and TV shows toys. and then like apply them to like <laughs> missions for my G.I. Joes, you know. They're supposed to be toys. Okay, so, so Ronnie. Oh, Pops is here. Hey, yo, hey, yo, Pops. Um, Papa, don't preach. Crimson Al says G.I. Joe rocks. Donald says Amazon, of course. He's, I don't know what he's referring to. Maybe me. I am the Amazon beauty. Um, and comic pops. I'm so sorry. I got to put my, you know what? I'm getting old, dude. My glasses. Okay. <laughs> pops says that guy looks familiar. Pops, he just had an, a sketch of you on the screen before we came live. Maybe Matt will show it to everyone. Um, okay, so going back to the next question, Matt, is what is your go-to treat at the movies? You got to have it. If you don't have it, you're not going. It's fucking popcorn. <laughs> it's fucking yes, popcorn yes, with butter. Yes, yes. Like, I'll, I mean, it's it's probably the worst thing for you, that butter and that popcorn. Right. But like, man, I'll fucking, I'll fast for, like, the rest of the day <laughs> just to, like, just so I can get it. Because that's, man, that is just like part of the experience for me. Yeah, I like to you say know? that I, I like popcorn with my butter. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of more accurate for me. Yeah, um, oh yeah, because you know what? The, the butter isn't even really for flavor. The butter right? is just fucking lube. You're just <laughs> lubing up that fucking popcorn and just, just packing it down. You know, you're just... Oh my God. You're just Fox like this weird head. little consuming viewing machine, just like lubing up your throat, and just packing <laughs> it, and then fucking watching well, whatever whatever is being brought to you. This is gonna sound crazy, but I eat popcorn as my like nighttime snack a lot. It is like my go-to nighttime snack. And oh, Pop really? says, Pop says he did not pick a spirit animal; it chose him. <laughs> and his movie go-to is Red Vines and popcorn. Um, so yeah, so like I will sometimes make popcorn at night cause it's, it's either, it, it's, it's the strangest combo, but a cup of hot chocolate, a big, a huge bowl of popcorn. And that's kind of how I end my day wind down. And I do that a lot. Um, but Matt, I just, just recently started doing stuff digitally, which I know, you know, cause you've seen a few of my pieces mm -hmm. and it actually works out that my hands get all greasy and stuff because my screen will get a little bit greasy or whatever. And my actual stylus pin will work better if there's a little bit of, my, a little bit of grease. A little lube. There's some lube going on on my screen. <laughs> okay. So mayonnaise or Miracle Whip? Mayonnaise. <laughs> you I don't know said what the fuck so Miracle fast. Whip. Yeah, because like Miracle Whip, like man, like, what? I, I, you you can give that shit to the astronauts. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like that shit. <laughs> give me the mayonnaise. Yeah. Give me give me some eggs and some fucking oil and some vinegar, whatever the fuck's in it. Like, right? I want it to be, and I, and don't make it healthy for me. Do not make this healthy for me. You know don't what? Worry. You know my, you know what my health is is moderation. Like, I'm exactly. not going to sit there and, right? and slather it all over my yep. shit. And I'm not going to, like, bake my chicken with, like, a mayonnaise, you know, dressing. It's like a, it's a little bit on the bread. Move on, yep. you know. A BLT, a little bit of mayo. Move the fuck on. Like, I, I don't know why it needs to be healthy. It's not like we're sitting around eating it. It's like, actually like better. Icing. Yeah. It's actually better for us to eat the things that aren't all altered and um the, it's better to eat the fat that's in a normal product and i'm with you on that it is not diet this and diet that and sugar free this and fat free this that is not the answer um and if anyone's listening do not please don't be offended you can call me i have a solution for you if food is your issue uh, uh yeah my like i'm not even like this is an advice that i'm giving out like i'm, I'm just <laughs> no, like, I get it, Matt. answering questions right so it's like somebody <laughs> else might be like moderation Fuck <laughs> you dude Fuck i'm not drinking moderation. in moderation i'm not gonna eat in moderation i yeah. know right he's okay. just like sitting there fucking oh wait never mind <laughs> we don't have to go there, but yeah. Uh 
Uh huh. What is the one thing you cannot go a day without, Matt? Oh, uh, like emotionally. Oh, well, it could be. Yeah, that's a good point. All emotionally. kinds of levels. You know, it's like I don't know. Like I, I don't know if I, I, I need to see my family. You know, I need to see my peoples. You have kids, Matt? Yeah. Nice. I think yeah. If you told me that already, please forgive me. But how nice many do you have? Um, I have uh, I have four daughters. I have two of them that are living with me. That's right. Uh, one's like in the Navy. And, wow. Um, and yeah, man, that's those are the people who I like. I jam on seeing. That's what I need. And then, like physically, what do I need? I definitely need. Um, Shower, uh, maybe some weed, coffee, <laughs> in that order. Go Matt, go Matt, go Matt. Right? I know. Like I'm, my my simple answer is coffee. Coffee and and any day that I get to take a shower with clean water and I'm above dirt, I got nothing to complain about, and I need to quit my bitching. It it always changes. You know what I mean? Like if, mm -hmm. if I'm out camping, you know what I mean? My priorities and what I need daily, like are, is, is a completely different scenario. If I go and I'm working on a project with, um, uh, you know, ABC or CBS, like my priorities change, you know, Bob says, there's nothing that has that kind of control over me, but I do like air. <laughs> He likes air. That's funny. Um, it's well, it's funny, but I also just said like one of my things is like if I have air to breathe, I'm on this side of the dirt, clean water and a shower and coffee. Yeah. I got I got nothing to complain about. Yeah, it's kind of a um, trick question. You're kind of tricking me into like this is the right, shallow this is as shit. Like, I don't me out. really need anything. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you figured me out, Matt. This is. And that was, those are just the warm up questions. So, you what he said about that? You shallow shit. Like, <laughs> the, la the last, oh, I already know this answer. I'm going to skip to this peanut butter, creamy or chunky? Chunky. Mr. Glenn, oh, he's going to get, I'm sorry, Glenn. Sorry, Glenn. Glenn Fleming is here. He says, hey, Dory. And Donald says, weed makes me dumber than a fence post. <laughs> well, you know what the key is? The key isn't to like, Take your neck medicine, which is what I call it, because like my neck starts to hurt from from sitting here working. So oh. daddy, daddy needs to take his, his neck medicine. Yeah. But like, I, you don't you don't like take it and then start thinking about working. Like you start working, and then you take your medicine, and then you like you, you stay within that like that pocket. Right. Rather than like like because you you can like oh, I'm gonna smoke, you know you, you'll take your medicine and then you'll just kind of like. Um, you know, what's the game with the ball that fucking pinball, you know what I mean? You just kind of like yeah, pinball yeah. around. Yeah. Is that, that, I mean, at least that's, that's what happens with me. So a you know, little bit know, of, a little bit of ADD. That's okay. Um, the, so the question on the screen is, is peanut butter creamy or chunky? Chunky. Okay. That's you're my second chunky answer. So so elaborate why why the chunky as opposed to creamy. Well, I'm really looking for the texture. Okay. So we already have a lot of soft things going on. We got you know the actual peanut butter is already creamy. Uh, the jelly is already is already soft. The bread is usually soft unless you toast it. So you're already dealing with like three or four things that are. Uh, soft in nature you uh -huh. know i mean you do have like the savory of the nuts and you have the sweet of the of the jelly but the the crunch is what it, it just adds a little extra to the uh experience wow. of the peanut butter and jelly that has got to be the most elaborate intricate answer to the peanut butter question i've gotten yet matt i'm quite impressed actually i used to <laughs> I like I like I like meals. I like cooking. I like um That's awesome. Yeah, a foodie would definitely you know what? That I don't know. Do you go do you do you identify as a foodie? 
<laughs> I guess so. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, most of the time, it's just like, just give me a protein bar. Like, most of the time, oh, if, yeah. if I could be, like, given food in, like, a gawk gun, I would be fine with that. Like, <laughs> like, like, if my wife came in and just, like, gave me my lunch like a fucking sheep, you know what I mean? She just, like, grabs me by the head and just, like, squirts it into my neck, and then I, I get back to work, I would be fine with that. But, like, yeah, yeah. sometimes I, like, get real into it, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm a hundred percent foodie, hundred percent all about food. So I, man, I could talk all day about food. I can I could sit here and come up with like, uh, and and what I can cook, man. The list is really long. So tell us before I switch to any other of my portions of different questions I have, Matt. Tell me what you're what you switched to drawing. This is not your little beard guy. No, I um, switching to a ninja. Ooh, okay. You know. Cause rock and just, roll ninja, rock and roll ninja, because that's my jam. That's the book I'm working on right now is rock and roll ninja. So, so, yeah. So, is it your? Are you the artist with other teams? I mean, with other people on a team, or is it? What are you? How's that? Tell me about that. I am the co-creator. Okay. So that was uh, me and and Mayor. We got together. Um, nice. And we kind of started hashing out an idea, like. So, you know, we got together and he had an idea and I had an idea and we kind of blended them together and then we kind of hashed out something new and okay. um, and then we got Chuck Dixon to come in and he just like took our, our shit and just like hammered it into like hard steel, you know, like he, yeah. so, you know, is so it's, so that's, that's, that's. That's where I am in it. So I'm, I'm drawing it and I'm doing all the design work and stuff for the book. Is it the uh, first one that's coming out? For Rock and Roll Ninja? Yeah. 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 This is the Ooh, first one. Okay. I get so excited. Like, I mean, I, I like some, I'm, I got, um, I have a wish list of all kinds of things, but one of them, one of the wish list I think items I have is, um, Sandman. But that's an old, you know, that's an older, what do you guys call those IPs? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so the, um, but I, I get excited when I hear stuff like, oh, the book is new. It's the first one because it's like, I feel like I'm getting in at the ground floor of some masterpiece. Oh, I, I, I think, you were you online? That? I've seen you. I was on with you, I think, when you were working on that. I may not have been in the stream, but I was definitely there because I remember the spaceship. So my next question, these, these are basically these are stuff that I'm, I'm sketching out while I'm on streams with people. Okay. You know, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to switch like doodling it. shit. You know, I, I just start doodling it and then I, I save these. That's for when been I, I, I send out a commission. Right. You know, so I'll, I'll just like, I'll send out the commission and then I'll, I'll pack a couple of these in there. Just really, because. you're just packing these in for extra. Really, Matt? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I, I still oh, feel a little so weird that people are paying you. me for my for my art. I'm just like, you're, yeah. you're paying me good money. Holy shit, I need to give you some more. Nice. So I'm going like, to switch us That was what I did for the, um, the Mavericks. Have you seen the... Ooh. Yes, the Mavericks. I have. I have. Um, I have. Or I backed it. I was like gonna say on order, but I just <laughs> I'm like, I'm learning the lingo, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely okay. have. Yes. Well, I think I want to say that's how we met, right? Weren't you on? You weren't on their stream, but you were in chat on their stream for their one of their campaign things. I think so. Yeah. I think that's how we met, and then when I went and I looked it up on Indiegogo. Um, you knowing because you did art in the book, right? Not all of it. What was for it all Mavericks? No, yeah, I, for Mavericks. I only did. Um, I only did like a poster for him. I just okay. did a, a one okay. a one piece one because I'm not really right. taking um, commissions right now, and I'm not okay. really doing anything outside of Rock and Roll Ninja. He's like, I'm not taking commissions. I'm busy, man. I got things to do. Dude, I don't want to get caught <laughs> in the fucking. You know what I mean? Like my stuff is due. Like, like I'm a December, busy man. like if 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 I sh if my shelf showed up in January, like mm. that's a little like, hey, you asshole. But like <laughs> if, if it shows up like anything past that, it's it's I don't know. I I prefer it not. You know. 
Yeah. So like me taking like other people's jobs, even though I would love to, uh, I'm just mm -hmm. not, you know, because it's, it's either hanging out with little, little people and changing their diapers or drawing ninjas. That's really, you know, that's my yeah. thing. But I mean, I got stuff lined up though. It's like I got stuff lined up uh, for, you know, January and then I have stuff lined up for next March. So lots cool. of stuff coming. So I'm going to switch us to um, the next portion of the show, but I'm also going to. Um, I'm going to try to add myself so we can do the the painting alongside the master thing. And uh, I was trying to think of like what on earth to work on while I was on here with you of all people, like you know, so I didn't feel like a total schmo because I'm on. I don't know. So this is what I'm gonna. I'm gonna add some more inks to this girl. Okay. That I've got. This is what I've got that I'm gonna work on. Right um, on. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to multitask, and I'm gonna throw this question up, and I'm gonna ask you, Matt, if heaven exists, what do you like? What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those gates? I'm sorry. <laughs> you you want him to say I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's a great absolutely. Answer. Oh my God. You know, I think, I don't, I think that's the first time anyone has said that as an answer. And I'm, I think I'm pretty in love with it. I think that's, that's, is there anything in particular you want them to apologize for or just in general say, I'm sorry. Cause it's, um, in general is enough for me, honestly, but you answer. I would say in general, I would say, um, you know, I would, I would, I, if he exists, he knows me. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, I don't, I don't need to pull out like the little post-it note of like the <laughs> shit that I'm, <clears throat> that I'm like, what the fuck is your deal, dude? Because like, there's also like, that? Hey, like, Hey man, like, thanks a lot for that fucking, that sunset that I saw on July fucking 13th of 1998. That was pretty dope, dude. You know, right. but, um, yeah, man, there's a couple of things, mm. you know, uh, leukemia, um, mm. sickness yeah, in that's, general. That's pretty much, yeah. well, I mean, it's leukemia has touched me extremely personal. It okay. seems extremely unfair. Mm. I'm so, sorry. Nah, you know, it's, it is what it is, but like, that's definitely like, that's an eyeball lock, you know? Yeah. So what would you like to ask him? I mean, you kind of touched on some things, but is there, other than demanding an apology and, and stuff, is there something you'd ask? Something uh, you'd I don't know if I would demand it. You know what I mean? That would be like to demand it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It, I, I, no, I it's okay. It. No, no, okay. no. Just to clarify, sorry. like, I think to demand it, you know, you're just kind of getting it to be uh, placated. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So is there something you'd ask other than that, other than that part about what we just talked about? Is um, there something else you'd ask? Curiosity, something? Uh, uh, maybe like, yeah, what were you doing before this? <laughs> right? Like what was going on, man? Like, what was you, be how, like yeah, what I'd be the like, fuck was going on I in was, your life? You sat like, one day so, so you made all this shit, like, what was your resume like where where was your previous what experience your to fucking like you just fucking started making shit like what did you have previous experience because usually that helps you know when you're doing <laughs> a, a, a job like this you know hey uh i need a i need i need a a contractor to build my house have you ever built a house right i don't know what do you mean you don't know can you tell me <laughs> just believe exactly. in me fuck I gotta believe in this guy. Maybe he's built the house. Maybe he hasn't. Maybe the little lighting works. Maybe it doesn't. So right. Yeah, I'd like to be like, yo, what were you doing before the Big Bang? Or you know, were you just sitting in the dark? <laughs> okay. Which well, is fucking you... kind of creepy. Like, how long were you like sitting in the dark before there was light? You just, right. Like, thinking shit through. Like, what were you doing? <clears throat> if you could jam anyone or something or uh, you know a type of person. To hell, who would it be and why? Man. 
Man. I don't know. That's a pickle. It's a pickle. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to. I yeah. I don't want to have that kind of power to like. Mm -hmm. To like. Yeah, that's somebody a common to, answer. Like some hardcore shit like that, because it, it 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 sounds corny, but it goes back to like the Gandalf thing with Frodo, or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Frodo, it's like yeah, like. You know, could you kill Smeagol, or you know, should you? You know, it's like you you could take the life, but can you give it? You know, yeah, maybe yeah, some, yeah. should kind of ease back on the, uh, you know, striking shit down. So yeah, I don't know I, if I'd want somebody going to hell because of my I'm weird a, asshole shit. Yeah, well, I'm a big fan of, of Judge Not Yet, Ye Shall Be Judged, and I got no interest in being in that role. Um, yeah, and you know what? Because it's also, you know, it also makes me think about that old. I think they made it into a longer movie where, like, the guy shows up with the fucking box, and you mm -hmm. open the box, and there's a button, right? And it's like for a million dollars, you. No, 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 no. Oh, it's, um, no, no. It <clears throat> sounds familiar. It's it's like so... um, it's a oh. it's like a box like this, right? With a with a button. Right, and this. Oh, I love and this how is, he just whips uh, out the drawing. We're gonna play dictionary wood. now. Right, <gasps> this is this is all. Wood. Right, and, to... and this is like a um, this is like a, a red shiny button, and then right here is like a um, this kind of glass case. You know that um, that kind of clips the... clicks and over it like that, and and if you if you hit the button, uh -huh. right, um, you get a million dollars. But the thing is, is that when you hit the button, somebody dies. <laughs> oh, okay. Who, right. You don't know who it is. You don't know the stranger. You know, it's just a complete stranger is going right. to die, right? And so they fucking were like, okay, we'll take the money. And the fucking wife hits the button, and they close the lid. And then the guy shows up, and he takes the box. And they're like, what happens now? And the guy's like, well, I'm going to give the box to somebody else. Uh-huh. So it's kind of implied that like you're now on that fucking list of people to get to get killed. Yep. Right. So I mean, if, it, so to be like, yeah, I hope like, that guy goes to hell. Like a million dollar bet, there's a baker's dozen people who are like, "Fuck Matt Barr, that guy could go to hell." <laughs> I mean, one I of our not, but one of know. our viewers said that there were a few politicians and lawyers. He said politicians and lawyers were some of his answers. And then I'm going to go. So I have a question up on the screen, Matt. And I, you know, whether you're conceiving art or someone is asking you for a commission, is there something that's just too taboo? You're not going to put it in your art. You're not going to draw it. Um, well, I, you know, I have kids and they're all girls that have daughters. So I'm not going to draw anything that's, um, violence against women i'm not really into like drawing uh anything blue like porn stuff like mm, okay you know what i mean because i, I yeah. i'm not really interested in like hiding stuff from my from my family and i that stuff is just like i'm not above it i don't have anything against it i just right. somebody else could do it you know what i mean yeah it's, i I totally get that. Like I'm in the same way. Like I, I, I'm not one of those people that likes to do work um, to someone else's. Like one of the reasons why my artwork has stayed on canvas using completely like original things that haven't been done before is because I, I can't, I, I cannot wrap my mind around doing artwork. Um, like, like doing the spawn that you did or doing the, what was that other figure character you had up? Um, Venom, excuse me, yeah. not Spawn. Venom. It it doesn't like. There's no part of my brain that works that way, and it's not about being taboo. It's nothing that has nothing to do with being taboo. Um, but it does. Yeah, I can get. I understand that. So, what was that gonna? Oh, I know what I'm gonna ask. I was like, what am I gonna ask you? Well, I know what I'm gonna ask you. I have I have these what ready. I'd know, right? What are three things that if I if I ask your family and friends, what are three things that you'd like them to be able to say about you? Jeez. <laughs> what 
Well, I know for one, you're an incredibly sweet guy and you're attentive and professional. Even though I was late this morning, he did forgive me, you guys, but I was late. Matt was not only here, but he was here waiting. He didn't leave. He didn't yell at me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> has, has that happened? Has somebody been like, no, oh, no. No, because I've never been late, Matt. I'm not that girl, man. Like, I was, I can't, I yeah, look. I'm going to have to have like a self forgiveness ceremony later for myself because I'm still upset about being late. But anyway, so yeah. So anyway, what are the, are, are there three things you can think of? I know some people don't like answering this question because they don't want us, you know, talk good about themselves. But I, I would imagine there's some things that you know for a fact your family can say about you. I bet you're a good dad. I bet you're an amazing dad. Yeah. So I would, I would, I would hopefully that that would be said at my funeral. That I was funny. I'm hoping. Oh, that's. that's I'm hoping that's that's mentioned. <laughs> um, I love that. Not okay. like you know. I, I, I you know man that guy that guy told a funny joke or man I wish you you know I, I'd rather them say that than like God you just wouldn't shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, have you have you ever tried a stab at, at stand up comedy or doing comedy? Um, you know, I thought about it and I've like wrote notes. Yeah. You know, of like what what I would what I would say, but it seems very like uh, topical, and I feel like the stuff that I say is very off the cuff and in the moment. You know what I mean? I, I feel oh, like I'm, yeah. I'm able to kind of like riff off of the other person, and you know, it, because then I I, I feel the uh, the kind of rhythm of like sometimes I could be the straight person, and then sometimes I'll I'll like crack a joke. You know, like I'm not always trying to be funny guy. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's like oh, I, 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 can, I feel yeah. I have comedic timing. I totally yeah. like get it. But just to like stand up on stage and being, you know, and, you know, and just be like right off the, you know, cuff of just like, hey, you don't know me, but um, hey, man, you remember this morning what happened with the dog? Pretty crazy. You know what I mean? It's like, I, you know, my whole family laughs because I'm able to, like, reference shit that's happened with us. But I guess when it, like, turns into a bigger audience of, like, trying to resonate with somebody in the audience, yeah. I, I don't know. Well, and yeah, I don't you... want to start, like, drinking because I feel like that would totally be necessary. <laughs> like, like, look, what time are I on? Nine o'clock? Okay, I need to start getting completely fucked up before I get on stage, you know? Well, I, I don't you know, want to do that. I just lost my, I just laid back on my bed to laugh at that because when I did, when I started stand up, because you know, I'm a, I think you know I'm a stand up yeah, comic. Yeah. Okay. So when I started stand up comedy uh, a little over 15 years ago, I had told myself I'm not, I'm not relying on cussing as to get the jokes and I'm not going to rely on being drunk or having booze, booze in me and you know, liquoring me up. So I, I did my stand up for the first six months of, of my career. I did my stand up stone cold sober and, oh. and I did. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Ugh. and I did fairly well. Like I, I, I really could have kept doing it in my, in my personal humble opinion, but um, I go on a Friday night and that someone didn't show up for me for one of the 10 o'clock spots. And so the club owner guy who was the guy that I was, uh, he was my mentor. He, he asks, he goes, come on, I need you. I know you've got 10 minutes in you. Well, Matt, I wasn't supposed to perform that night. I was the only reason I was there was to support my other comics and to watch the show. I had been drinking and I, and, and I'm like, no, man, I've been drinking. I haven't ever performed while I've, you know, after having been drinking. Like I had never done that. And he's like, "It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I need, I need ten minutes." So I go and I do the See? ten minutes. This is not. This is the famous last words. You should never ever want to hear this. I walk outside after my set, and I'm hanging out with the other comics, and the guys are like, "Whatever you did tonight, whatever you did different tonight, you need to do that all the time." <laughs> Nice. Okay. I know. So when you said that it stand up comedy would get you to start drinking, I fucking lost my shit because that's exactly what happened. Because I, of course, I was drinking after that. I was like, "Well, I, you are you so, so you're saying I was funnier with the alcohol? Let me get back on stage." <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I mean, if okay, so if I was in that scenario, I think that would be okay because suddenly I had like a, a subject. 
you know, if this guy was late and didn't show up, I could like go up on stage and start talking about how we got a phone call from the hospital and that he's okay. Right. Uh, he was really tense. He wanted to jerk off. And so he jerked off with like icy hot. And so, like, <laughs> you know, and just, I would just be 10 minutes about how he like, you know, was trying to rub his dick out to a, like a raw chicken wing and, you know. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I had a friend actually, he worked in an emergency room. He was, he was in med school and he said one of the worst cases was a guy who couldn't, um, couldn't achieve a certain male thing that men uh -huh. want to be able to achieve. And he used a pencil to try to help the God situation. Damn. I know. Okay, so this next, this is a quote I've got up on the screen, Matt. It says, fuck being average. I'm a goddamn savage. And this is a quote by a late departed man. He had, he passed away in April. His name was Van Bates. And so the question I have to go with this quote, this quote that says, fuck being average. I'm a goddamn savage. The is question that from, is that like a run the jewels or is that like a rap? It's from a rap song with, by Black Hesher, Van Bates. It's part of, it's in, it's a line in one of his songs. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of him. Black Hesher, a lot of people have. It um, sounds super familiar. It wouldn't, it would not shock me at all if you've heard his music. Cause he's really, you know, I mean, is he, is he like, you know, Snoop Dogg or Tupac? No, but the man was, the man was extremely well known. So it wouldn't shock me if you knew it. But um, so the question that goes with that quote, the camera in the right place, is what is that thing, that one thing that you would like to do most, do or that you do the most that sets you apart? And and you know that you're not like the average Joe and it makes you something, someone, something different. Is there something? That makes me different? Yeah. Than average Joe? Or what do you do? What do you aspire to do that you, you know, that you feel puts you outside of the average category? Wow. I don't know, man. Fuck. <laughs> Am I average? That's, that's the fear. That's the fear mm -hmm. of that's the, the fear of being, you know, average and mediocre. The fear of, right. Of like fucking dying and, and not being remembered. I mean, I like, I appreciate my family and shit, but <clears throat> I mean, you die, you got what, maybe two generations, maybe three at the most that like, remember you after that, you're just a fucking rock in a fucking graveyard or, you know, or whatever, or you're just like photos. But like, if you're an artist, it, in um, my opinion, it, it makes you immortal, you know, yep. like if you're like paintings can make you immortal uh books can make you immortal yep um i love that so you went there like a little, there's exactly. a little bit of that where it's like maybe the average guy isn't thinking like that like maybe he's not like trying to think of his golden path you know i don't know oh i totally get it like you just hit the nail on the head for me because i know for a fact like i had a former mentor who who touched on that in a way and you know he he was specifically talking about writing poetry or writing and how the writer immortalizes himself the moment he puts something down on paper that's what he said and you just said the same thing and i totally agree with you 100 percent i one of the am most amazing things about finally finally getting into a world where i was allowing people to see my art and then i started to sell my art because there was a time mat where i wouldn't show it to anyone and the first time one of my pieces went home with someone i, I it literally was like I, I i i akin it to what people must feel like when they rescue a rescue dog and then they give it to their they send it away to its forever home. Like they feel like the satisfaction of like, Oh, someone's going to get to enjoy and love and care for that. Hopefully, you know, I mean, it may end up in a flea market bargain bin thrift store someday, but whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about it, you know, but I like the, I love the immortalization of the whole thing. And what I, and I, had you, have you ever done any art pieces or paintings of someone who is either living or dead that you immortalized by doing that piece 
because I believe you immortalized them by doing a piece about them. <clears throat> I think I've no, I think I've I think I've helped maybe uh, like mm -hmm. the stuff that I did that I did and that I do for uh, the NFL. Like I do these giant paintings, you know, uh -huh. for them, and uh, I mean I'm doing paintings of, of players. So I mean I'm I'm helping with that, I guess. Right. Yeah. That's so cool. But it's like commercial yeah. art, though. Okay. It's not like fine art. It's almost like commissions. You know, it feels very like Medici. You know, we are commissioning you to paint this player, this gladiator that we are sponsoring. Oh. So we have we have about four or five people watching. It looks like um, if you're out there, throw up a question for Matt. If you have a question about anything we've talked about or what you've seen, um, I'm going to um, switch us to. Oh no, I'm done with our questions, Matt. Like that part done. We're done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I so I'm gonna pick your brain as we as we sketch alongside each other and we switch to just doing our jam and our flow and our art. This going big thing. So other than those pieces you did that you just mentioned, have you how big are your pieces normally? Art pieces, paintings. Or how often um, they usually are about three by two, four okay. by two, you know, they're usually on the slightly bigger side, but I really, really like going real big, like 12 by 12. And, and you're talking feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like, um, in my garage, I have a wall built, and so I like, uh, I just take a drop cloth from um, mm -hmm. Lowe's and just drape it over, clamp it, Drop, put some some nails into it, you know, some, some staples, mm -hmm. staple it to the to that wall, and then use that as as the canvas. The drop cloth. Yeah. And then what do you do with that? Uh, then that uh, you roll it up and then you ship it. Ship it to what? To wherever they're doing the interview. Like you you ship it to wherever they they need the background. Mm -hmm. It's like these giant backgrounds. Oh, I see. But, but I was there's like, like, what on earth like I had to do one for like when I did one for the last Super Bowl, like I had to do one for the Buccaneers, and then I had to do one for the Chiefs. But the one before that, where it was the Patriots, uh huh. Like I did a whole bunch of stuff. Like I did like eight or nine paintings, like giant paintings. Wow. One of Gronk, one of fucking Brady, one of uh, Golf. Wow. They were like huge. You can see them on my website. Yeah, I have seen, I want to say the Brady one, I think. Um, it's definitely a different, that is not just the size is, is out completely outside of anything I've ever done for sure. But I, I, I don't, I've never done like, I don't know the, the subject of those, like, you know, the, the football player, unless it's a Saints player, I'm probably not going to want to draw it. I'm probably not going to paint it. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I'm not, I'm not really a football fan. Like I have no idea oh, who these people are until, until they asked me to, to paint the person. Oh, okay. Okay. I was sitting here, uh, I, I was sitting here and I was laughing inside my head about the way I was reacting to what you're telling me. I know you've said some of that to me before, but like, you know, I'm getting more detail, but I'm sitting here thinking, I really don't think I would paint Tom Brady. <laughs> like I'm like I got no interest in painting Tom Brady. Um, you would, I, you would if you were if you were getting paid. Um, oh, that's true. NFL money. It's not like yeah. It's not <laughs> like I, I would. I wake up and I go. You know what I want to do? I want to paint the last three coaches of the Steelers in a <laughs> fucking montage. You know what I mean? It's like, is That's that really what point. I want to do? Like, you make a really... very fair point. That is a really good point. You're like, you know, I didn't wake up wanting to draw this fucking guy, but I will. But you, you know, know what? The, when 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 they said how much I was going to get as a day rate, I did wake up and want to paint him. <laughs> You're like, I'm painting him now. <laughs> I, woke up, I, I like woke up and said, I'm not going to bed until I finish this fucking painting. That's how much I love <laughs> Tom Brady. 
But I do like Gronk. Like, I don't know who Gronk is, but we're going to we're gonna yeah. paint that motherfucker. Once I realized who Gronk was, Gronkowski, and, like, how he does a lot of, like, animal rescue and stuff, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, this guy is fucking cool. And, like, I, I definitely was, like, really enjoying uh, the, you know, the painting. And, and he ended up, like, taking two of the paintings that I have because they offer them to the players, you know? Oh, nice. Well, that's nice. Yeah, it's really them. nice. Yeah. Uh, but but they they either they they uh they offer them to the players or they just disappear. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what happened to those paintings? They're like, yeah, we don't know. Nice. They got they got shipped, they got packed up, and after the shoot, and then they disappeared. So before we get on another subject, um, I know that I was running late today, and it's a little after eight, and I I don't know how pressed for time you are. I I think that we talked about an hour, but I mean, I'm not. I'm fine just doing what I'm doing. I got no, no, you know, cares today. Um, but yeah, so you let me know when you have a hard stop and you need to go. Okay. Or if you're ready, or if you're ready to go now, I don't want to. I'm not going to take you hostage. But I did want to mention it just because I looked up at the time. Um. So yeah, I just wanted to mention it. Otherwise, so so the other than that. Yeah. Do any of your daughters? draw or paint or aspire to paint like you uh no no little artists in the family it's just um, you know, well stop. i still have two of them that are pretty young okay um so there's still a possibility for them but the right. other two uh they like doodle and sketch and stuff but their their passions are, are other places so it looks like crimson owl comics is back he says yep and then hey yo, hey, yo. Or pops no pops oh wait these are old comments <laughs> like wait okay. a minute like what the hell okay uh let's see donald says not who you are it's what you do um now i'm impressed and hey dory money talks make it happen <clears throat> i uh make it happen captain right make it happen I do have um, aspirations for, for getting to, you know, a point where I actually am making a living with my art as opposed to going to a day job. Um, and I kickstarted that. And I, I'm not scared. Oh, well, maybe I am a little scared. But I quit my day job yesterday, Matt. What? Yeah. All right. I know. I mean, I, I, I've done that before where I've quit, I've quit the day job without having another one because, um, it puts me in high gear of interview, uh, job hunting. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I've, it's, so this is not the first time I've done it where I've just said, you know what, I'm going to go spend the next two weeks with this, you know, little bit of, um, time I have, I'm going to go spend that looking for a job I'm going to want, but more than this. So, but in the interim, I do plan on hopefully getting, you know, getting some more art done. So the reason I was asking about the, the, the work you do where it's paid, and I don't, you know, I kind of been picking artist brains about commission work because I like the idea is the, from the money perspective, the idea is, is a great idea, right? Like my head goes, okay, yeah, I could use money, but I have no interest in going back to what you said about yeah your interest might change if you see the dollar signs but what if it doesn't change like what on earth on what i mean i other than money other than money because that's an easy answer why why in the fuck would i want to do art that someone else is asking me to do conceived their way why would i want to do that is there an answer is, is it is money the only reason you would do that yeah I mean, that's really, I mean, that's really, unless, unless you're like, just like painting stuff and putting it in a closet to never be seen again. Yeah. It's all commercial. Like you're trying to sell it. You're trying to do something with it. I think. Yeah. You like make everything a good that I do. I, I, I mean, I like do these little doodles and stuff, but that's just because I, I, I don't want to just sit on the stream with my little, uh, you know, owl avatar, <laughs> you know, I mean, I kind of want to draw stuff, but like normally, like, 
I don't draw stuff unless I'm getting paid. Because mm. there's so much, you know what I mean? It's like, there's so much work going on that I just kind of get, I get a little burned out. And so mm. if I have some time off, it's, you know, hanging out with I'm my, not, my kids. I like but when that. I do chill out, when I do chill out, I'm, I'm yeah. drawing. You know what I mean? Like I'll spend a whole day working on something and be like, okay, I, I want to just like chill out for a little bit. Yeah. I'll end, I'll end up drawing. I'll end up like doodling or something. But what I'm doodling is like pertain to something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's, it's like, it's like, oh, look at this monster that I drew in this spaceship. Like, that's really cool. Like, yeah, like it's actually for something, you know, there's, all, <laughs> there's, a, there's a purpose for everything. There's a purpose for everything. So I did, so I did, you know, like I, I was, so I feel the same way and I get your point and I totally agree. And I, so I'm, I am, I am trying to open my mind to it, you know, open my mind to the idea of doing different things. Um, I, and I had, I had it in my head and I can't remember what I, what made me remember this, but I had had it in my head a couple months ago that I had never done anything art wise that was pop culture or you know something that was that existed before like mm -hmm. i i actually had said that like i'm like no no all my pieces are totally original and i was sitting here one day and i'm looking at my wall of paintings and i realized i totally had forgotten that i did a, a, a basically i did a painting of the widow from the tv show into the badlands have you ever seen that show uh no no so no. i had forgotten all about that and i'm like wait a minute hold on hold a second <laughs> i i loved her character so much i loved her everything about her this she's i can't remember the actress's name but i loved everything about her so much that i painted her and i had forgotten about that and the woman is hanging on my own wall matt <laughs> and i do like what a, who does that um glenn fleming says i've been lucky i've worked in art my my all my life and made some money and yet it's never been about the money really it's about the art or the words i put together 100% um i totally couldn't agree more i i definitely would love to make money and i'd love to make lots of it but i i so what, why I brought up the widow painting, Matt, was the whole name of my company that I created that I'm still in the red, of course, but my art company that I, because I call it Doris Jones Labors of Love, the whole point was, you know, things I love. These labors, these, because I don't even like calling this work. I don't even want to call my artwork. Um, and so I... I said, okay, so if I'm going to do commission work, if I'm going to do work to someone else's, you know, taste or whatever, then it's going to have to be something I would love doing. And I love doing nude paintings. I love the female form. I love everything about the male form, male or female, actually. Um, and so I did, I haven't got, you know, I had one person commission me to do a nude painting and it this it gave me the idea and i you know i haven't had any other takers yet one of my friends says you're just doing this to get new nude, nudes of us you just want nudes oh <laughs> i know i was laughing them all well no that is not the case because no matter how i ever am on a stream or something i could not like don't get it twisted man i'm what i'm fort fucking knox you tell me something it's not going anywhere i'm i'm just never repeating it so um, other than saying I have a commission or got a commission, that is the most you're ever going to hear from me about who this person was or what, it, you know, like nothing else is coming out of my mouth. So, so that's on my website in my shop now is I'm calling them, um, the fine art painted version of a, of a boudoir, doudoir, the French word for, you know, those photos they do where they're in the erotic clothing and stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the photography name for those is boudoir or doudoir. Doudoir. Um, doudoir. It's a French word. It's I know it's funny because the word dude is this slang, but in French, the male word for an erotic male photo 
in like an erotic form or a photograph like that is called doudoir. Um, Donald says, use your tech abilities for love and money. Yeah, I'm so, so yeah, so I'm going to do that. Whether anyone takes me up on it, Matt, and I make any more money <laughs> at it or not, I'll find out. I'll find out. Well, good luck. Well, I thought it was a neat, it's, I, I kind of go, here's where my gut goes. It may, it may sit there and I may never have another person in the world pay me to do that. But I, I decided a long time ago that I was going to work on aspirations of things I would buy. If uh -huh. I, if I saw the listing, like if I'm coming across it and saw the listing and I put it in my shopping list, that's kind of a measure for me to know if I'm going to do something or not. If I see it and I put it in my shopping list, or if I would be behooved to, to want to save up for it when I see it, then I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to just do it anyway. It, it may never get looked at. It may never get sold. It may never get read. It may never nothing. And I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do it anyway. If it, if I would spend the money on it, like if I had the money to spend on it, I can't afford my own art, man. <laughs> You know, but if I could, then I'm going to just do it anyway. I'm not going to let money, no matter how much I'd like to have money making art, I'm never going to allow money to keep me from making a creation I want to make, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, you know, when, when they're, when you, when you're doing a commission or you're working as a, as an artist, like mm -hmm. most of them, like last 25 years has been as a, professional illustrator then art director there's all kinds of stuff i did some storyboards but um right i don't know i i was like trying to get into comic books and i and i had a family to support so a lot of mm -hmm. like like pride kind of mm. got like put on the shelf you know like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna be an artist it was just like yeah i'll do your logo yeah i'll do your t-shirt you know it wasn't like yeah. what i wanted to do but um, it was, you know, it was, it was supporting a family <clears throat> and then that just ended up being a career. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I can do that. Like I, those are things that I didn't get trained professionally to do, but I do all of that. Um, I've done everything that, that anyone has ever seen related to my, my company or my art or my poetry, mm -hmm. my, my, I've produced all of, I've done everything on all of my music videos for my spoken word. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure Mr. Uh, oh, I'm such a, I, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Ms. Forgive me, Glenn. I'm old school, man. I, so Glenn Fleming was in the audience. He's in our chat and he is, a, he's coming, he's going to be on our master show. And I am one of those people that, um, what was I going with? Oh yeah. So the, I, if I can do it myself, here's my, one of the things I do in my life. Uh, not that this is about me. This is about spotlighting you, but this is my, a master's letting me paint alongside him, you guys. This is amazing. I'm Matt, I'm just, Matt, I mean that. I mean it. If you, you know, all of Matt's links are in the chat or in this description for the video, you guys that are watching, man, you've got to go look at his art on his, on his page. Be oh. So the, um, anyway, my philosophy is this, if I can teach myself how to do it, whether it's video editing, the music, the whatever it is, if I can teach myself, if I can figure out how to do it and not pay someone, I'm gonna. And so knowing that about me, if I had anything that gives me pause or hesitation of, into getting into a world where I'm, you know, marketing myself to clients to do their videos or do a logo or do a whatever, I, I, my head, my head stops and pauses because I wouldn't pay anyone to do that stuff because I do all my own. Like I've, yeah. I do all my, I do all my own. I had a marketing uh, guy message me and it turned into me asking him if he wanted to put me on his roster of people he could have used to work to help him with his clients because 
I'm not a client, man. Like I'm not here to be your client. I can't. I can do, if you come to me to sell me something I can do, I'm not going to pay you for it. That's not going to happen. Um, and so like in this next book, the, it, when I do my volume two of my haikus, I'm going to do, I'm going to do hand-drawn letters and boxes because after I got done with the first book, um, and I don't know, have, so this is your, is this your first comic book that you're doing the artwork on? I know you got into comics and you're doing this project. What is, it's called, remind me what your book is called again, the one with the ninjas. It's called Rock and Roll Ninja. Rock <clears throat> Excuse me, Rock and Roll Ninja. Rock and Roll Ninja. Let me take That's a sip right. of this coffee. Okay. Yeah, it's called, uh, it's called Rock and Roll Ninja. Uh, okay. It's not my first comic book. Okay. I actually did another comic book. Okay. And I don't want to be judged on it, but um, it was for the United Nations. Okay. Uh, sorry, that was my cup of coffee. I did the, um, you know, that, that little uh, angry lady that yells at everybody? That like, how little dare girl? you? The threat, the uh, Greta, Greta Thornburg or whatever. Yeah, her name I is. yeah, I know who she is. So, so she, she was like in 2019. Uh-huh. Right, so that was their the UN's approach that year was to get a, an angry little girl, huh. and she was part of their sustainable goals program. Interesting that the UN is pushing. Well, I was part of the previous year's campaign, hmm. which was called Comics United, and this is something that you, you know people watching can look it up. It's called Comics United, and I did. A comic book for them and it was kind of wild because I did a 24 page comic book uh -huh. I wrote it I designed the characters I, I designed like all the, the the cover all the logos I literally did everything except for color it okay I got this guy to color it for me because I just the time the time constraint was just I needed I probably would have colored it as well. Did you hand sketch and ink them? Were these were these done in uh, the original traditional way, or they did digital? Yeah, uh, no, they were done. I still have the pages. I still have the ink pages. Wow. So, so you can go online and you could read the comic book now. Okay. But um, yeah, it was like this guy. It's kind of like a almost like a Captain Planet kind of a guy called Gridiron Green. And um, they teamed me up with an NFL player. Mm -hmm. And so him and I, we like teamed up. And he was like, man, I want to do a black Captain Planet. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, that's cool. And, and I was like, what else you got? And he was like, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I, I got. Was like, I was like, you, all right, you okay. need to do the rest. That's yeah, so, so yeah, so the, the rest of it is like, you know, the re ninety-five percent of the of the story I came up with. Like I came up with all the villains. So, so the funny thing is, I spent you know a year putting this comic book together and and you know providing it to the UN. And like the UN wants to see every step of the way. So you provide a script, you right. see that 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 script gets handed around like to at least twenty people. Uh huh. Right, and so. Oh, you have uh, uh, indigenous people from the Amazon in your comic book. Yes. Well, which tribe are you using? Like, it really? would be questions like that. It would be like, what, what tribe, what part of the Amazon are you in? Because that needs to be, we need to make sure that that's uh, okay, that that's, you know, sensitive. Huh. So there's a lot of, like, uh, sensitivity adjusting. Yeah. Right? So... You know, I have uh, the hero fighting the bad guy, and I called him the crab. It's very, like, I wrote it very, like, Stanley. You know what I mean? Like, very, like, 1960s Marvel. Like, okay. not deep. Lots of, like, little quibs and jokes. You know, but, like, definitely yeah. some awesome action. You know what I mean? Real soft, because I knew this was for kids. You know what I mean? I, this isn't... Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't, like... 
the dark, you know, this isn't, you know, Captain Planet gone dark. No, this was like bright and light and it was Saturday morning cartoon. But, you know, they were just super sensitive with everything. So at the end of the story, I wanted uh, the hero to win. And then I wanted uh, UN peacekeeping soldiers to show up like wearing the blue helmets. And I was like, yeah, so they'll fly in on the V-22 Ospreys. It'll look really cool. They'll repel out the back, you know. Right. And they were like, no, 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 no. You, you, you can't do that. It was like, why not? It was like, well, we don't have, we, we, we don't deploy soldiers like that. I was like, no, they're peacekeepers. Yeah, we don't do that. So I had to like have the UN person in the story. Like there's a guy from the UN in the story, but he's literally just like advising people. <laughs> yeah, the UN, they're... It, it's amazing. It's say, amazing the bureaucracy. Because what is that called? The 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 non like as non like they're so not taken aside, right? They're not taken aside. That's kind of the point of the UN. They they're gonna try to advocate for everyone to get along. You know, there's no one's better than the other kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they can't. It's just it, that's part of who they are. It's part of like it would be like. Going, it would almost. Do you know who the WHO organization is? Yeah, I think it's so. The World the Health, Health Organization. Yeah. yeah. So there's, it's very similar to what, to how WHO works. WHO works, but that's from a perspective of healthcare. Now, there, I mean, someone out there can call me and, and try to get on my case about it, but I've been in healthcare for 32 years and the most non judgmental, taking aside opinion I'm probably going to get is going to be from the WHO organization. That's just my own opinion. And that's just from years of following them and that, and their works and stuff like that. Cause they're, they're about saving the entire planet from a health care perspective, from, from a health perspective of treating people. They don't, they, you know, like nothing else really comes into play about their conversation. They're there to heal people. They're there to make you better and make it, uniform for everyone so that everyone can have it do you have mm -hmm. health care today you know like let's make sure you can get treated anyway that's just my own i let me get off my soapbox because i can't stand talking about that stuff on sometimes i don't want to really go there but so anyway so you this comic book <laughs> so i did the comic book and, 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 and it got really so it was that. really fun to you know I, I i did a comic book from you know from you know cover to cover Nice. And um, and that was something that got me the the gig with uh, Rock and Roll Ninja, you know. Very cool. That were those were samples that I that I sent to Richard when I when I first started talking to him. That is so cool. Yeah. So I don't have a comic book, as you know. I do have this illustrated haiku series. Um, it's actually launching on Red Valkyrie today at one one my time, which I think um, Eastern time is. Four, no, three, no, four, right? Three hours? You're three hours ahead, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was the first time I had ever put illustration to my words. And I love what, what Glenn Fleming said earlier about uh, putting those together, art or the words together kind of thing. I had done art. I had done writing. I had done poetry. I had done all these things, but I had never really... Other than slapping some painting pictures or photographs of my paintings, ooh, you switched to something. I was looking down for so long at my piece. Is that box the box? Are you drawing the guy that you were talking about earlier with the box? The box? Oh, no, no, no. I'm uh, drawing some kind of like alien guy. The guy's going to be in a space suit. And then in the yeah. foreground, there's like some giant teeth. I'm just fucking, just fucking around. I like this. Have you ever seen uh, the movie Prospect? Yeah. Oh, one of my favorite, like, it's one of the better uh, of, of these, you know, sci-fi movies that people, because I'm a real super nerd sci-fi girl, and I get real judgmental. You want to talk, you want to hear me judgmental, <laughs> give me talking sci-fi. and. I like the, yeah. uh, the Russian style suits in that movie. Like, it's yes. obvious that there's like a different like manufacturer of, of the suits, you know? 
Pretty for cool. sure. And I love the fact, and, and I've had this conversation about the suits before. Was it you and I that talked about it? That makes it, did we? I don't know. It, I, the, what I love about the suits in that movie is how realistic it is to the, to the year or to the, what it really will be like. Because I think that some sci-fi movies, my problem with them is they're in these, these, these intricate things and all these different whatevers that are supposed to be modern. Sure. But most of the stuff looks like a lot of times it, it doesn't make, it doesn't fit to me. It, I'm like, that's not what it would look like. I don't think that would be right. Like that's too far off. Like we're not going to go like, I imagine that we will advance in technology, but I think there's some bare basics. That's never going to change. Like the way something's designed is just going to well, be what it is. Have you seen some of the new NASA suits that they're designing? No. They're like, um, instead of being like bulky, they're doing like skin tight suits where they're like fiber flexed around you and shit, where it's almost no. like, it looks like it's like weaved around you in a way. Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. Was there a reason that it was the big, weird, bulky stuff in the first place? Was that like, I think that... they're, you know, they're trying to create a, like they only had certain materials right at the time so they were just like mm. trying to like layer those materials to create the little micro atmosphere that you're needing inside your spacesuit you know so you have like you know the layers of like rubber and aluminum foil and and so it's just like these giant bulky ass fucking suits so like i saw one it was yeah. like the woman was wearing it and it was like skin tight and it had huh. this like weird uh like fiber mesh kind of look to it. And like all the joints had um, like special like uh, stitching and shit. It was, it was pretty cool. That is cool. The, um, I would imagine that the suits have to be a certain ability to keep them warm, right? Like they, they've got a, they can't freeze They're in space for goodness sakes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to like, you have to like, make sure you don't freeze when you're out of the sun, and make sure you don't boil when you're in the sun. Mm. Right. So you have to like. That's crazy. You're like, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah don't go over there. You're gonna boil. You're gonna freeze. Uh, there's That's a um, there's a channel on because I I'm a huge sci-fi fan, and when I'm like thinking about sci-fi, I, I I really like to get deep into it, maybe too deep, but. <laughs> There's a, a channel called Isaac Arthur. Okay. He's a futurist. I mean, he talks about uh, space navigation. He talks mm. about generation ships. He talks about, you know, what kind of uh, civilizations will be around at the end of the universe and shit when it goes cold. Like, he, I mean, it gets like fucking wild. Like, what type of aliens are there? What type will we might meet? I mean, it's it's really, really, uh, really interesting. Like his, he did like a half an hour uh, video on space navigation, right? So like oh, you, wow. you're thinking, you you know, off you know, right off the bat, you're like, oh, if you have a star chart, you know, you can do anything you want. You can go wherever wherever you like, you know. But then, you know, when this guy starts breaking it down. Like, no, like, that, that star is fucking moving in one direction. That other star is moving in another direction. Right. You know, there's, like, and, like, so it's just, like, the whole universe is constantly shifting and moving in different directions. So there's no, like, solid star chart. So you have to, like, have a, almost like a, a map of the universe. Like a, um, I don't know, like a, what would you call it? What's it called? When you're trying um, to build something in a computer? A fucking program, not a program, a fake, a, a facsimile of something real, and you're doing it in the computer. Oh, like a, a oh god, what, what is, the that fuck is that word? It's right on the, a, well, there's a design. There's the word design. Like what is the things you you have in the hologram and are the holodeck? The transporters. What? <laughs> the holodeck of the Star Trek. You have these. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, so not scenario, but a fucking oh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> we need a wordsmith. A I've... digital scenario being run by a computer. Oh, a simulation. A simulation. Jesus. 
<laughs> a simulation. So, Thank you. so they're saying that like it wouldn't be just be like a map that you rolled out. Like your map would have to be a, a simulation Aww. of all My the stars moving in all the different directions. You know what I mean? Because you can't yeah. just say, "Oh, let's go, mm-hmm. let's go to that star," and then we'll take a right. Like that star <laughs> could now be, you know. 20 you know light years closer than what you first started so like you'll fucking blow right. right into it like it was really interesting the way this guy was explaining it and it just felt fucking terrifying yeah i have no like i i watched i love 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 oh and mike jimmy lorsha de Bruyne is here and he said what up lovelies hello mike um we're at we're just at that like relaxing painting stage mike so uh if you have a question for Matt, please throw one up. Um, the um, what was I going to tell you? Oh yeah, so like the when it comes to sci-fi movies, one of my favorites. It, I'm a, I, I I love. Okay, I think they're overdoing the Mars thing a little much. Like I I'm like, can we can we stop doing movie after movie about going to Mars? Like I mean, they just there's so many of them now. Um, it's like nobody has any more topic material. Like everybody's talking about Mars. But now, having said that, in my bitchy, complaining, judgmental way, I love them. <laughs> I watched all of them. <laughs> I can't get enough of them myself. So I guess I should shut up and couldn't stop complaining. But like, there's one with Hillary Swank has a, a series that she's doing. Um, I watched the first uh, season of that. There was a movie with, um, what's his name? Oh, what's the guy that played Batman? The the one guy. Um, Val Kilmer. What was it called? Red Planet? Not Val Kilmer. The one who, the Batman versus Superman Batman. What's that man's name? Ben Matt, Affleck. Ben Affleck, yeah. So Ben Affleck is in it. He's in a Mar- one of those one of those. Mars movies. Oh, really? Uh-huh. It's a TV show. It, wait. No, maybe it's not Ben Affleck. It's not Ben Affleck. It's not. It's someone else that's famous. That doesn't matter. So, anywho. What else? So, I asked. Oh, yeah. So, Prospect. The other thing. I love Pedro Pascal in that. He's really good. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Have you seen Raised by Wolves? Um, I saw like the first couple of episodes. And what did you think of that? Um, nah, I didn't no. really like it that much. Really? I, I like some of the, I like some of the elements, but then I was like, eh, I don't know. There, he was like trying to be too deep for me. I don't know. I was like, what the fuck is with the snakes? Why are they flying around? Like, you're not, <laughs> it's just, like, just fucking stop, dude. And it's like, no, that's supposed to be Satan and this is supposed to be Adam and Eve. And it's like, so you're leaning on the Bible to tell your fucking convoluted story. Like, that was in, that was what was going on in my head. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? What the fuck? Like, she's forming kids and like, wait a minute, now her, is her programming all fucked up? Like, it was like, then she kills the other dude that she, it was like, whatever, man, I'm fucking. You're out. You're like, I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. So... I was like, all right. <laughs> well, it, I, and I know you may be able to word it better than me, but in, in the scope, or maybe it's the hero's journey, whatever it is that, that storytelling is, whatever that kind of go-to thing is that people do for storytelling. One of the things I totally agree with you about the whole using the, the, the Bible to tell your story kind of thing, because it it reminded me in so many ways. I had just, just, just binged all of Vikings, right? And Vikings, the entire thing is about the atheists fighting with the Christians. Like, Mm -hmm. like uh, other than, you know, pillaging and plundering, yes, for money and, and trying to get all of the, you know, pillaging they can get it out of their systems. The other part of it was this, this, and it was a true thing, you know, back then with the with the Vikings and you know being who they were and and coming into worlds where they had all converted to Christianity, you know. And, and but but it was funny to me. What was striking to me the most about Raised by Wolves when I watched it was well, it wasn't striking 
excuse me, wasn't striking was that it was the same story I'd seen a million fucking times. I'm like, can we, can we stop having this discussion? Do we have to have an entire series centered around yet another discussion about one group of people and another group of people using religion to argue? Do, do I, I don't need another series like that. I just, I, I've seen enough. I've had enough. I like the beginning uh, some of the beginning seasons where they were showing the uh, the one king from England and he was like bathing in the Roman like baths and shit like he was oh like, yeah like that was pretty cool you know when he was like yep. you know they they think fucking giants made these I mean us now in hindsight we know that you know there was a Roman Empire but those fucking nitwits had like no idea you know what I mean <laughs> it was like hey do you know there was a huge fucking empire before you that was doing aqueducts and like all kinds of shit that you've like all forgotten what oh yeah what you know <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it, i it, thought that was cool but then it started to get a little like people were just like fucking i don't know i'm just gonna like, all right. <laughs> got a little boring i mean not that I'm oh, a prude. not that i'm a prude but it was just like yeah it was like i i ended up liking uh norseman a lot more Hmm. I don't think I've watched that one. And I do know. So I, I, I was trying to think of like, so Vikings got Norseman me is hilarious. Yeah. I'm not, it, here's what made shocker. I'm a stand up comic. I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of comedy. The only comedy that I really like my go-to comedy to put on. If I, if I really want to laugh is probably going to be jackass movies. I own all of them. They're filming number four right now. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, I what I do, do you think like about Bam not being in it. Who? Bam Majira. Like, did you see he like lost his <laughs> I shit? I said who's probably answering your question. Oh, uh, okay. As far as I'm concerned, as long as Jackass has um, Johnny Knoxville and Stevo, I really I love the you know like some of the other guys were cool. They were all right. But honestly, for me, 100%, the only reason I ever watched it past the first couple that I ever saw was because of Steve-O. I mean, Johnny, and Johnny's cool. I like Johnny. If you if they ever hear this, Johnny, don't be mad at me. But Steve-O's my favorite. <laughs> hmm. Steve-O's the only one I follow. Okay? I follow, I don't, he's, the, he's the comedian, and then maybe that's why. Like the other guys were just kind of, you know. I like that Chris Pontus. Was the yeah, and were, yes, he, I like. And did, one of them know, died. The Wild Boys. Was he the yeah. one that died? No, I don't think so. No, because one of them did die, and I don't remember. Yeah. I, whoever it was that died, I remember was one of my one of my favorites. Like he was a really cute guy. I was like, oh, I like this guy. But yeah, like I love. I was so funny because so I follow Steve-O, right on Twitter and and someone made some comment on his Twitter about how he was too old to be doing. Um, wait, I missed, Oh, I got I missed this comment from Mike. He says, I'm setting up everything for the auction this weekend with pops. Rules have been defined. Nice. I am launching. That? that is Mike, Jimmy, Lorsha de Bruin. He does life on Cora and he has a new series, a new IP series coming out. I, um, it's in pre-launch right now. Um, I'm launching my haiku series today at one o'clock Eastern time on Red Valkyrie. If you're listening, Mike, and I think he, well, I'm fairly certain he already knows this. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was talking about. What were we talking about? Uh, fuck. Talking about sci-fi. Oh, Jackass. So Steve-O Someone on his channel, on his Twitter or somewhere, made some comment about how he was too old to do Jackass 4. Because he's, like, older than me, and I'm 51. And so what did Steve-O do? He went base jump, and he videotaped himself. Shit. <laughs> I was fucking dying. I'm like, that? That's my man. Um, Glenn Fleming says, drawing while I'm listening today, I penciled a page of hatch, lettered it, and I'm now inking it right now. I keep glancing at the screen to see you guys drawing. This is great. We're having a drawing party. Um, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how Matt would feel about it, but I'm 
would be open to having everyone come in and paint with us. Mike says, I know I'll be there to try and grab backer number one. Oh, shit. <laughs> if anything could ever make me feel like a rock star, Mike, it would be that. The fact that someone's going to show up at my, my book launch so they get to be backer one. Who does that? Who does? Who's going to do that for me? I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's just cool so how, where are you guys on your book let's talk about your book tell me all about it about rock and roll ninja yes <clears throat> man we're, I mean, at this point we're just i'm just drawing it i mean the, okay. the, all the all the scripts are done okay and i'm just drawing it at this point i wish it could be more exciting it's it's going to be a fun book. <laughs> that is pretty exciting. It's going to be it's going to be a fun book. Okay. Um it's it's kind of GI Joe, it's kind of uh Buckaroo Banzai. Mhm. Mm it's uh it's got a lot of cool stuff ranging from rock and roll music references, New York City references. Um I got ink all over my fucking hands. Um it's got all kinds of cool stuff. I nice. wish I could. I'm trying. I'm working on my pitch. But uh, you know, it's it's four I guys, am, yeah, who okay. uh, who were who were Vietnam vets. Uh, okay. It's in the late '70s, early '80s rock and roll scene. They were vets in Nam. They came back. Uh, you know, they're starting to jam. They're really getting somewhere. They get into a, a crazy fight with some. Uh, S and M, uh, gay guys with like assless chaps, and I um, have okay, I have seen that picture. Seen that? Actually, I've so, seen so that. So they picture. they lose their they they get their equipment destroyed, and they have to take a job consulting these people in South Asia, Southeast Asia, and um, it ends up that they're being hired to <clears throat> update this ninja clan. So the ninjas there are, you know, they have ninja stars and arrows and swords and all that stuff, but these guys are showing up to like, show them how to use claymores, how to use M16s, how to use Uzis, showing them how to like update and modernize their equipment. Right. And uh, they don't realize that they're ninjas at first. They think they're just uh, helping you know, train an indigenous people. Oh, okay. And but you know, it, it, it they end up being ninjas, and it's kind of cool because like the ninjas kind of act like they don't know how to speak English. Right. They're kind of like coy about what they know, and then when it flips, like the ninjas are, they're like the ninjas are, are super badass. They all speak multiple languages. They all knew exactly what the guys were saying. You know. Yeah. That, you know, I remember the, the painting and I, I don't remember what show you were on when you were showing it. I think you were on the stream. I think I was in the stream. But yeah, I remember that that picture. So, so I didn't know what it was called, but it was funny when you started, you were like, I got to work on my pitch. Uh, someone called it the elevator pitch. We're like, you don't want to give too much away. You, you, yeah. def you definitely, do no spoilers, okay? For anyone listening, for any of you comic book guys listening, and for Matt, as someone who, now, I, I'm i definitely not new at art, and I'm not new at writing, but I'm definitely new to this world of comic books, and stop spoiling, man. <laughs> like, stop fucking talking. Like, I want to hear the pitch, and I watch all these streams. I'm a little bit of a live stream junkie. But I do watch a lot of streams and I watch a lot of people talk about their comics. And my only advice with all this, and I have to kind of even take my own advice because I, well, my haiku series, really, I can't really spoil, you know, haiku. there's not, yeah, like there's not really much spoiler to it. Um, but I, man, you know what? So my point in a long drawn out way, Matt, is don't worry too much about saying a lot. Um if you can boil it down to a paragraph, maybe four or five sentences, that's enough. That's I mean, my own. It is, that's it my is, own opinion. You know, that's if 
I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Jack Davis. I'm a huge fan of Will Eisner. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of Dean Colon. So just um, imagine those guys doing a, a ninja book, but with rock and roll. So it's yeah, and the, there's like a Wall Street element. So it's like if you took Buckaroo Banzai, American Ninja, um, American Pop, uh huh, and you combine them all, and then you had you know some leather. <laughs> it's so fucking ape. It's so just so fucking ape shit back wild, man. It's like, what if Buckaroo Banzai was like a ninja movie? And is this a comedy book? Like, is it meant to be funny or is it going to be serious? Like, is that meant to be serious? I'm, and I forgive me for asking. It's all that over question. the place. It's, they're, it's they're all over the place. There's, well, there, That's there's probably humor. why I'm asking. There's like, humor when it's topical. Okay. You know what I mean? If somebody has yeah, something yeah. smart ass to say, they'll say it, but it, it, it won't just be like levity for fucking levity's sake. Like, they're not Spider Man. You know, these guys. Like they uh-huh. rock and roll and like they joke around, but you know they are special forces and you know they do do some uh, some killing, you know. So it's not. I wouldn't say it's a kids' book. Like yeah. it's, it's definitely like a, a hard R, you know. But this is definitely um, one of those like crazy, you know, kind of the '80s movie that you would see. Yeah. In the middle of the night, you know. Nice. Well, I would love that then because I, I'm all about, uh, I was an eighties teenager, so I'm all about some of the stuff from the eighties. Like that'll grab me in, you know? Um, yeah. Like we wanted like a fanzine kind of, uh, element to it as well. Like, yeah, it's going to be black and white. There's going to be some zipper tone, but this is not going to win me any awards, Matt, but I did this piece for my book. No, that's cool. So you can tell what that is, right? Yeah, I can tell it's people sitting there. Okay, you can't tell like who these people are. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. How old are you? What the <laughs> fuck? He's like, what does my age have to do with it? It's the Breakfast Club. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay, so I, I no, don't apologize. Are you kidding? Yeah, I, I remember Breakfast Club. I did it on purpose. Like I, I wanted. Well, I'm gonna try to, to play it off and say that I did it on purpose, like that. But the truth is, is that I'm not great at doing realist realism. Like I'm not a fan. I, I wasn't a fan of doing art that way, and so I never bothered to learn the skills that are required to do like super realism, real, real uh-huh. stuff. Um, cause I never had, I never had the desire to, so I never bothered to w- learn any of the skills. So that is the closest to like real people that I, you know, other than my widow, my widow from the, the into the badlands painting I was telling you about, in my opinion, she's, she's pretty badass for being, you know, based on a real person uh, or a real character. I think I did a pretty damn good job personally. So if anyone out there is in love with the widow, I've got one. <laughs> she's, she's still here. She's still for sale. Um, oh, but at, so that the breakfast club from the eighties, that movie and some of those movies, the John Houston, John Ford or whatever that director John name Hughes. was. John Hughes. Yeah. That guy. A lot of those are, they, you know, those are kind of movies that raised me in a way, so to speak, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so um, that one in particular, I, it was so weird because when I was young, I thought I was like hot, all the alley sheeny. Like, I'm, oh, I'm totally the outfit or out, whatever, nerd girl, uh, you know, the basket case, 100%. And then I grew up and I, and I start going through life and experiencing life. And I look back on my high school years and my, my childhood and my teen years. And I'm like, oh my God, I was on the track team. I was the most valuable female athlete my senior year. So you were the jock. Um, You thought you were the emotional chick, but you're really the jock. Correct. And then I go back and I'm looking at, again, I'm looking at my, my high school and, and stuff and I'm going, wait a minute. 
And I 100% was that girl. I didn't get caught, but I was breaking into churches and doing vandalism shit with my friend Kathy, like my friend Kathy and I. Man, I was 100% criminal. Oh boy, was I a criminal. Like I, I got, I was a rebel. Something in me, something about being a foster kid, probably. I'm a rebel um, guy. Yeah. And then as I got <clears throat> older, the only time I'm ever, like, I can turn princess on 100%, probably in relationships. Like, the most princess, I guess it's a stereotype, but the most typical, traditional, female, submissive type of thing I'm ever going to be is when I'm in a relationship. Cause I don't, I don't wear the pants. I'm this alpha female that can do everything she wants. And I, I'm going to do what I do myself and I'm not going to pay anyone. Right. Like we've been talking about. Right. But when it comes to relationships, yeah, no, I'm not the dude. That's not me. That's not my job. <laughs> so old school. <laughs> oh man. I'm an old school girl living in a new school world. I, mean, I got to write a poem about that somehow. What you got? What There's you got? Some old that? stuff. There's a, some old stuff, old school stuff that works. There's yeah. Some old school stuff that like doesn't. Yeah, you know some of the old school stuff that that doesn't work for me. I was trying. I'm like I can't think of anything. Can you think of anything in specific? Um, you know? Maybe some of the racism, some of the racism and stuff like. Oh yeah. Having family members, you know, like from from Tennessee and from Appalachia, you know, that had kind of, let's say, questionable opinions, you know? <laughs> I like how you put that. That's a very diplomatic way to describe someone's opinion, like, you know? You know, you're like sitting there talking and suddenly like they say something and you're like, oh, that's not... Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's that's not modern yep. mammal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> mammal. It's... Not that my mammal was anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Does, do you actually have a mammal that you call mammal? That's rad. Yeah, mammal and papa. Aww. I mean, they they both passed. Um. That's so. Cool. Yeah, they're my mammal and my papa, and they lived in Tennessee. Nice. I lived like back in a holler. Big in a holler. I grew yeah, up in Louisiana. In a yeah, I grew up in Bayou Country, not a holler, but as I mean, I get it. Like when I, you know, I over the years, and I've looked at other places of the U.S. and where people grew up and what what the you know what it's about or what they how they had to grow up. I'm like, oh my god, the only difference was the setting. I was on a bayou, they were in a holla. Like that's pretty much a the holla. only difference. Call, what do you call it? A holla? A holla? Holler. Holler. Yeah, gotta, there you go. I, I'm dropping the R. Yeah, you gotta put that R on there. Holler. You gotta put the R. I need the R Matt. Yes. <laughs> He's like, yes. I'm just trying to help. This yeah. is holler. This is holler education class one hundred and one with Matt Barr. Yeah, it's weird. I, it's like I, I love New York City. Like that's my jam. Like I feel super happy being in a city. But like when I'm in, you know, Blount County or I'm I'm in the Appalachian Mountains. Like that feels good too. You mm -hmm. know, Cades Cove, uh, Blount County, John Oliver Cabin. Like all that stuff is like. Super I can relate for me. so much to that. I can relate to that so much. I came to California, Matt, when I was nine. I was nineteen. No, I I was eighteen. I turned nineteen like a month after I got here, and I so I come to California, and I uh, you know from Louisiana, and um, you know I came to the city. I'm not in the country anymore. I'm not on the bayou anymore. And 32 years later, fast forward to 32 years later, I live in a little town in this mountain part of San Diego County called Ramona. And it, again, it goes back to what I was saying before. The only difference between Ramona and, and the bayous that I grew up on is that it's, it's the, the scenery. That is re <laughs> that's really the only difference mm -hmm. between, between this, you know, and it's, it cracks me up that I came all this way and, I'm, and all this stuff, you know, just to end up living in a community similar to what I grew up in. It just, it, it's funny. To me, it's funny. 
Although I, if I could afford it and it was not, it was an option, I would move to New York tomorrow and I would never leave. It's the one place I love more than anywhere it's else. Either, the- it's either um, you have to be young enough to just um, eat spaghetti and butter or you, you got to have <laughs> fucking money. Like it, it's either one uh-huh. or the other. Yeah. Yeah. But that would be 100% where I would live if, 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 you know, I'm still, you know, well, my oldest boy went to college, so he's away at college right now, but my youngest is in high school, but so I'm, you know, they're not totally done grown, but, um, so I'll be, I'll be put for a while. I'll be here for at least two more years or so until my youngest is done with high school. So, but after that, but after that, I am going to go where the world takes me, to be honest with you. Um, I have no intention of, of staying cooped up or locked up or spent up in one place. I, I want to, um, I know, you know, Glenn was, was in, and he's probably still working on his, uh, piece he was working on if he's still there, but he's done traveling and I hate traveling. I can't stand traveling. I don't want any part of traveling. However, the opposite emotion exists in the same space in my head where I'm like, I also don't want to sit cooped up in the same room for the rest of my life. Right. So there's this, there's, you know, at some point I will figure out a way to merge those two. And that's actually, I I think to some degree, that's kind of why I've done some of my, I mean, in addition to the fact that we were dealing with COVID, it's one of the reasons why I kind of started some of these spotlighting things is it was my way of socializing without having to go out of the house and without having to travel. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I can just go on a, let's just go on a live stream. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm on live streams a lot in chat. Yeah, I'm very personable. I feel like I like yes, to be sir. extroverted when, when it comes to, like, stuff that I enjoy. Uh-huh. So it's it's really nice to, like, meet other creators and other other artists and also meet, like, people who are just fans in general. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, I really appreciated you from the moment we met because, like, I had, you know, just the the art and the, you know, being willing to talk art, being willing to to answer my questions and not make me feel like I'm, I'm dumb because I'm not, I haven't been in this world. I don't know the lingo. I don't know the verbiage. I don't know all the terms. And, and to be able to... You know, it's one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show and, and invited you to be on a, here on a Saturday morning with me is because that to me is what makes a master. I think, I don't remember if I said this to you, but I did say this to, to someone that to me, you can be as good as you think you are or, or really are at, at whatever it is your craft is. But if you're not willing to in turn teach someone else what you know and do so without being condescending or an asshole, then to me, you're not a master. You can be good at what you're doing, but a real master for me is just my own opinion is a teacher is someone who's willing to in turn, give it away to someone else. Give it away. Does that make sense? Where you're, yeah. You just, well, yeah. Like, yeah. You realize that it's like, there's no harm in like sharing what you know, because everybody's on their own path. You know what right. I mean? And it's like, I, I, it feels weird. Like you calling me a master because I feel like I'm not, I'm not where I'm, I need to be. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm on my path too. I'm maybe I'm just a few steps ahead of you. Maybe I'm a few steps behind you. Maybe there's some, a bunch of people ahead of me. You know what I mean? It's like, it, we're all just kind of like moving up this mountain. Well, I think, um, you know, the, yeah. what I had to learn I had, there's a couple of things I had to do when I started venturing into this world of, of comics and talking with artists from, from this world. I had to uh, remind myself that I'm not a sequential artist and I, I don't know that I'll ever be. And I honestly don't care. Will I try? Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Like I'm doing a, I'm doing a stand up I'm doing a comedy webtoons. Right. And I, I, I only have like, I want to say maybe six episodes on there and they are, they're, they're my art, you know, they're my creations. Some are, you know, I hand sketched a few. I did. I'm, I've, I had never used digital before, so I'm kind of playing around with digital Mm -hmm. and, 
you know, do I wish, do I sit back and look at someone who can draw, like, what's a character from your book? What's one, uh, the name of uh, a character? Uh, hey, uh, you know, I hate to put a pin on it, but I need to, I need to boogie. Okay. No, I'm sorry, not to cut, not to do a hard, a hard close, but I, I hear somebody yelling in the, in the I hear somebody That's yelling. That's all right, Matt. You know what? I've had you all day. I've had you for a long time and I just saw your message. I'm so sorry. I didn't look it's okay. up. You're more than welcome. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you your so time much. Today. Hey, thanks right. everybody for watching. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, that's perfect timing because I need a human break myself and some more coffee. And for all of you guys that are, for those of you that joined in that are still here in chat, I appreciate you. I hope you have a great Saturday. Um, I am going to be um, it, and I'm fairly certain, I, it may not be in the details of this particular stream, but on Red Valkyrie's YouTube channel, you can find today's live broadcast listed there. It is on their channel as an upcoming live stream. It is Red Valkyrie Presents La Premier Tome. And with that, I bid you farewell and have a wonderful day. Live long and prosper. Shall we begin? This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Let's begin now. Ignore me no more, or forever miss me gone. Stop caring, I will. Sweet girl, I am, yes. Don't underestimate me. Cut a bitch, I will. There went Pops one day, suggesting I do something in a whole new way. <laughs>